So, in this module, uh, we will uh, discuss thermodynamic cycles and as I mentioned in my previous lecture, we will uh, look at uh, three types of cycles, uh, two of them power producing, one power absorbing. The first one uh, is a steam power cycle which uses water as the working substance and the second one, second type of cycle that we will look at is the so called air standard cycle. And the third one which is a power absorbing cycle is actually uh, the, um, the vapor compression refrigeration cycle. Now, in the category of air standard cycle, we will look at Brayton cycle, uh, we will look at auto cycle, air standard auto cycle and air standard diesel cycle. Okay. So, let us begin with uh, uh, the steam power cycle or uh, Rankine cycle. Now, most uh, thermal uh, power plants which employ for example, uh, coal as the fuel utilize uh, the uh, Rankine cycle, modified form of Rankine cycle, but here uh, a fixed quantity of water executes a cyclic process and, uh, and this qualifies as a heat engine as we discussed in the uh, previous course. Okay. Now, uh, what um, the strategy that we will use um, while discussing this is as follows. We will start with the, uh, the most basic form of the cycle as shown here and we will evaluate uh, three performance metrics for this cycle. Uh, first one being the specific power, okay. specific power is nothing but W x dot over m dot that is the amount of power developed per unit mass flow rate of the working substance. Okay. And this is a very important uh, performance metric because it decides uh, or determines the size of the equipment. For instance, let us say we have two designs and both produce the same power, but one requires let us say two times the mass flow rate of the other. Okay. So, which means that the size of the equipment uh, should also be bigger in the latter case to handle twice the amount of mass flow rate. Okay. So, specific power is very important when it uh, comes to sizing of the, uh, of the power plant. So, we will look at that metric. The second metric that we will look at is the thermal efficiency of the cycle. Uh, this was uh, evaluated in the uh, previous course itself. So, this is an energy based efficiency. It is nothing but the ratio of the power produced divided by the rate at which heat is supplied. Okay. So, that is the second metric that we will look at. So, this is W x dot over uh, QH dot, where QH dot is the rate at which heat is supplied in the high temperature reservoir or supplied from the high temperature reservoir. The third performance metric that we will look at is the second law efficiency of the cycle. So, uh, after evaluating these three metrics, what we will do is look at the rate of exergy destruction in the individual components in the cycle. Okay. This will tell us where the exergy destruction is a maximum and that also indicates where we should actually focus uh, our attention and make improvements in the cycle. So, if you want the performance of, uh, of the cycle to improve, we should focus on these components where the exergy destruction rate is a maximum and then see how we can overcome this. So, we will propose means by which this can be done. So, we will evaluate rate of exergy destruction in individual components and we will propose means by which this is usually addressed and reevaluate these performance metrics to see whether improvement has uh, taken place or not. Okay. So, we will proceed in a systematic manner and address each one of the deficiencies and then uh, come up with the final form of the cycle, which is probably uh, somewhat close to the actual cycle that is employed in practical power plant. So, we will close this module by looking at the layout of a typical 1 gigawatt power station and then identify components there, which are uh, similar or same as what we have discussed in this cycle. So, at the end of the module, by looking at the actual uh, or the cycle of the actual uh, power plant, you should be able to realize that whatever we have discussed carries over uh, completely to actual uh, applications. Okay? And, and if you may recall that this was the objective of the course. Okay? So, we look at the actual application, then you should be able to relate each one of the components there to what we have discussed here and be, and be able to do uh, the analysis of uh, these types of cycles should you encounter them uh, at any, any time in the future. 
Now, Rankine cycle is not only used in uh, coal based thermal power plants, even nuclear power plants also in the secondary loop use uh, Rankine cycle because that uses again water as a uh, working substance. So, uh, this is very general and uh, let us start with the basic cycle here. So, um, uh, the basic cycle let us say we begin uh, uh, looking at the cycle from state 1. So, state 1 is entry to the turbine. So, basically this has four components, a boiler where heat is added, turbine where uh, power is generated, condenser where heat is rejected to the ambient, pump where the uh, liquid water is pumped to the uh, boiler pressure. Okay. So, let us uh, look at the uh, cycle on TS diagram and then go back to the block diagram. Okay. So, state 1 as you can see is at the boiler pressure. So, the cycle basically operates between uh, two isobars. One is the uh, boiler pressure and the other one is the condenser pressure. Okay. So, at entry to the turbine, we have in the basic uh, Rankine cycle, we have saturated vapor at the boiler pressure. It expands in the turbine. If the expansion is isentropic, then we uh, reach state 2s. On the other hand, in a realistic situation where the um, uh, expansion is not isentropic, there is uh, going to be some internal irreversibilities. So, in that case, we will reach state 2. Okay. Either way, we reach the uh, condenser pressure and if the uh, water is a saturated vapor at entry to the turbine, then uh, 2s and 2 both actually will be in the saturated mixture region. Okay. So, from here, heat rejection uh, takes place in the condenser. As you can see here, 2 to 3 is heat rejection in the condenser. So, so, 1 to 2 or 1 to 2s is expansion in the turbine and 2 to 3 is heat rejection in the condenser. And then the water which is now a saturated liquid as it, uh, as it uh, leaves the condenser is now pumped to the boiler pressure by means of a pump as you can see here. So, this is saturated liquid and state 2 as we discussed is a saturated mixture. This one in the case of a basic cycle, this is saturated vapor. So, the saturated liquid is pumped in the uh, pump to a boiler pressure. Again, if the pump is isentropic, we reach state 4 as otherwise we reach state 4 uh, as a result of internal irreversibilities. So, the uh, compressed liquid state. So, uh, when the, when the uh, water enters the boiler, it is in a compressed liquid state. So, heat is added here until it becomes, so heat is added at constant pressure until we reach state 1. Now, for the sake of simplicity and without any loss of generality, we will assume the isentropic efficiency of the turbine and the pump or indeed any other turbines and all pumps to be 100 percent. There is no loss of generality in doing so. Um, you can always repeat the examples that we will work out using um, uh, realistic values for the isentropic efficiency. What we wish to bring out uh, through these worked examples is the, um, uh, is the effect of the improvements that we are suggesting on the overall performance of the cycle. Okay, so, isentropic efficiency being 100 percent does not affect any of these conclusions in any, any manner. So, there is no loss of generality. And as you can see, because um, uh, these processes are reversible, you can see that um, the, uh, okay, let me just uh, erase these things. So, uh, the heat added in the cycle is nothing but the area under the uh, heat addition process curve. So, let us just uh, uh, show it like this. So, the heat addition process curve. looks like this. So, this is the heat added during the cycle. Now, the heat rejection process is 2s to 3 and again it is a, uh, a reversible process. So, the heat rejected during the cycle may be illustrated like this.
So, this area that uh, that you are seeing here this area that you are seeing here is a uh, q h minus q c. So, this area is uh, q h minus q c the area shown in pink <coughs> and since uh, the working substance executes a cyclic process you know from first law that this is the net work that is uh, produced during the cycle. Of course, when we illustrate uh, processes on a TS diagram, we are showing the cycle. So, everything is on a per cycle basis. When we actually do the calculation, since it is a steady flow process, everything will be on a per unit mass flow rate basis. Okay, so, let us look at uh, an example involving uh, basic Rankine cycle. So, an ideal basic Rankine cycle operates between a boiler pressure of 160 bar and a condenser temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. Determine heat supplied, net power produced, thermal efficiency and second law efficiency. Also calculate the rate of exergy destruction in each of the components. Assume steady operation, neglect Ke and Pe changes and um, also assume that heat is supplied from a reservoir maintained at the highest temperature in the cycle and heat is rejected to a reservoir maintained at the condenser temperature. These are important for us to evaluate um, rate of exergy destruction in the individual components. Okay. So, basically uh, we can look up these values based on the states that we have mentioned. So, at entry as I said before, uh, it is a saturated vapor and at uh, state 2s, uh, S2s remember, remember this is uh, located by showing the, by uh, using the fact that S2s is equal to S1. So, this is a saturated mixture and state 3 is a saturated liquid and this is a compressed liquid, liquid state. So, heat supplied may be evaluated by applying the steady flow energy equation to the boiler and on a per unit mass basis it comes out to be 2375.63 kilojoule per kilogram. Heat rejected again on a per unit mass flow rate basis comes out to be 1465. Work produced by the turbine is 926.25 kilojoule per kilogram. Work supplied to the pump is very small compared to work developed by the turbine. So, this is only 16.15 uh, kilojoule per kilogram. So, net power generated which is uh, Wx dot turbine minus Wx dot pump is 910.1 kilowatt per unit mass flow rate of steam. So, thermal efficiency of the cycle, uh, we use this definition, we get it to be uh, 38.31 percent. Okay, And as I mentioned, pump work is only about 2 percent of the work produced by the turbine, it is negligibly small. Now, one important um, uh, performance parameter that is of relevance in, uh, in, in Rankine cycle is the average temperature of heat addition. Okay. And the average temperature of heat addition is evaluated using this expression. Basically, um, uh, what we are saying is the following. Uh, Let us show the cycle on a TS diagram. So, uh, if this is the heat addition process, 4s to 1, then uh, this entire area as we uh, showed earlier is the is uh, a QH. So, uh, we can actually uh, uh, evaluate the average temperature by taking this area, dividing it by the uh, entropy change uh, S1 minus S4s. So, what that will uh, give us is an equivalent uh, heat addition process at a constant temperature. For instance, so when we do this, we may get an equivalent uh, process like this between the same entropy limits and it may look something like this. So, it is between the same entropy limits. So, we will probably have something like this. So, this is the equivalent process. So, this temperature here 
is the equivalent high temperature Th prime. So, Th prime is Qh dot divided by uh, M dot divided by S1 minus S4s and that comes out to be 243 degree Celsius. Notice that the saturation temperature corresponding to 160 bar boiler pressure is 347.4 degree Celsius. So, the average temperature as we have indicated here is considerably less than the saturation temperature corresponding to the boiler pressure. <coughs> of course, in the basic Rankine cycle, this is also the maximum temperature. Okay, so, which means that uh, in the boiler, when we add heat, we assume that the boiler is maintained at this temperature as heat is added to the uh, working substance. So, now uh, we uh, go on to evaluate the second law efficiency. So, rate at which exergy is supplied. So, if you uh, uh, look at the cycle, you can see that uh, exergy is supplied uh, in the boiler, okay, and exergy is recovered in the, I am sorry, exergy is supplied in the boiler and the pump, and exergy is recovered in the, uh, exergy is recovered in the turbine and Condenser. So, rate at which exergy is supplied, as I said, is in uh, the pump and heat supplied in the boiler. And this may be notice that we assume that the source is maintained at a temperature which is equal to Th, which is nothing but. So, this is Th, so this is the highest temperature in the cycle. So, that comes out to be 1250. Rate at which exergy is recovered uh, in the turbine and in the condenser that comes out to be 1018. So, the second law efficiency is 81.43 percent, which is reasonably high. Now, let us look at the rate of exergy destruction uh, in the individual components. Now, we have assumed both the turbine and the pump to be uh, isentropic, which means that there is no internal or external irreversibility. So, the rate of exergy destruction in the turbine and pump are 0. Again, as I said, there is no loss of generality in assuming these to be isentropic. Now, rate of exergy destruction in the boiler may be worked out uh, in um, using our familiar expression in this manner. So, that comes out to be 231.64. Now, in the condenser, because uh, uh, the process is uh, reversible isothermal, the exergy destruction in the condenser is 0. So, exergy destruction in this case occurs entirely in the uh, boiler. And uh, so, that is where the scope for further improvement is. And this exergy destruction in the boiler as we discussed earlier is entirely because of the large temperature difference across which heat is transferred to the uh, to the fluid. So, if you look at the uh, if you look at the cycle, you can see that the fluid is at a temperature uh, which is considerably less than the peak temperature at which this, uh, the reservoir is maintained. So, there is a large temperature difference between the reservoir and the fluid when it enters the boiler and this difference uh, diminishes as the fluid approaches uh, the uh, saturation temperature here, but the difference is very large nonetheless and that is what causes this large exergy destruction. <coughs> So, this actually demonstrates the usefulness of uh, the notion of exergy. You may recall that this was primarily the reason why we developed the notion of exergy so that we can look at individual components, identify those with poor performance for uh, improvement. Now, a few points are uh, worth noting about the basic Rankine cycle. The basic Rankine cycle uh, is discussed here for academic purposes only. It is not uh, practically useful because the expansion in the turbine takes place entirely in the two phase region. And uh, although it is possible to uh, construct very specialized uh, turbines which can handle uh, saturated mixtures, it is generally uh, not preferred. 
okay because the uh, uh, the um, the complexity is there number one number two the um, erosion of the turbine blades as a result of handling uh, liquid droplets and uh, vapor is also high okay so life is also uh, not very long for such turbines so it is preferable to have the expansion occur in the superheated region and at the end of the expansion we would ideally like to have a dryness fraction around 0.9 or so or higher than that that would be even better okay so that is one very important point so we would like to move uh, these points further uh, closer to the saturated line better even here okay so as you can see the only way we can do this is to actually allow the fluid to become superheated at the exit to the boiler okay by allowing some amount of superheat we can shift these two uh, data points i'm sorry these two state points towards the saturated vapor line okay so that is a strategy that we are going to use next okay the efficiency of the cycle can be improved by increasing the average temperature at which the heat is added now average temperature at which heat is added can be accomplished uh, in uh, in two different ways one is to simply increase the boiler pressure for the uh, at least for the basic rankin cycle so if you consider the basic rankin cycle So, if you consider the basic Rankine cycle, the average temperature at which heat is added may be increased number one by increasing the boiler pressure, which means this uh, will operate at a so you um, you operate at a higher boiler pressure. So, four S will now move to this location and if you want it to be a saturated vapor as in the basic Rankine cycle, uh, this will be the uh, uh, this will be the state at entry to the uh, turbine. Um, usually what is done is we would prefer one to move like this and this should become like this. Okay, So, this is operating at a higher boiler pressure. So, that state 1 is superheated at entry to the turbine. That is one way of increasing the average temperature in the cycle. The other way of increasing the average temperature in the cycle is to uh, is to increase the degree of superheat. So, we keep the boiler pressure the same, but we increase the degree of superheat. So, we move this along this isobar. So, we keep the boiler pressure the same and at exit uh, to the boiler or at entry to the turbine, we have a superheated vapor. Okay? So, this also increases the average temperature at which heat is added. So, that is TH prime. So, in this sequence of uh, examples, progressive examples that we are going to look at, we will keep the boiler pressure and condenser pressure the same and uh, evaluate uh, what superheat does to the cycle. Now, in uh, reality today, both these strategies are widely used, uh, namely increasing the boiler pressure, increasing the degree of superheat are widely used. In fact, the boiler pressure of most modern installations today actually are uh, higher than the critical pressure of water. Okay? So, these are uh, super critical and ultra super critical steam power units. Okay? So, the critical pressure for water is 221 bar. So, yeah. most modern plants today operate at pressures of 300 bars or even above that. 300 would be uh, super critical. If it is even above 300, then it would be ultra super critical. Okay? So, the efficiency is, uh, is can be quite high or, or efficiency of these units can be quite high. Okay, so as I uh, demonstrated earlier, adding superheat while keeping boiler pressure the same has this effect on the cycle. So, state point 1 is moved from here to here. And immediately, uh, it becomes apparent that the heat rejected has increased by this amount, but the heat added has increased by a larger amount. Okay, so, the heat added has increased by so, 
So, this is the increase in the heat rejected and this is the increase in the amount of heat added because the isobar is steeper in the superheated region, the increase in the heat added is much more and consequently you can see that increase in the work produced by this in this cycle is also much higher. So, this is also the increase in uh, work produced. And the, the increase in heat rejected is smaller because we are still operating within the two phase region where the isobar is horizontal. Whereas, the increase in heat added is much higher because the isobar is steeper in the superheated vapor region. So, consequently W net is more and increase in heat rejected is less. So, we expect this cycle to have higher thermal efficiency. Okay, and let us see if that comes out to be the case. So, state 1 is now superheated as you can see here. So, we have added 212.6 degrees of superheat. So, previously as if you recall, TH was 347.4 degree Celsius that was the saturation temperature. So, this temperature is 347.4 degree Celsius. This temperature now we have added another 212.6 degrees of degree Celsius of superheat. So, this state is a superheated state. 2S still is a saturated mixture and 3 is saturated liquid same as uh, before and 4S is compressed liquid same as before. So, these two states remain same as before, 1 and 2S have changed now. So, we repeat the calculations uh, as we did before. So, rate at which heat is supplied is now higher as you can see 3260 compared with 2375. Heat rejected is 1869.14 now compared to 1465. Okay. So, you can see that heat rejected has not increased by that much. So, work produced in the turbine is equal to 1407 kilojoule per kilogram power required by the pump is the same. So, the net power produced in the cycle is 1391.69. So, 1391.69 compared to 910. Okay. So, you can see that there is a considerable increase in the specific power in the cycle as we anticipated. So, the thermal efficiency of the cycle works out to be 42.68 but only an increase of 4 percent which is actually quite uh, quite high in practical terms but it seems small but it is actually quite considerable. Okay. Now, the dryness fraction at the exit of the turbine has increased from 0 0.61 to 0 0.78 but still it is much less than the value of uh, 0 0.9. 0 0.9 is uh, the lowest value that is generally acceptable. Okay. So, the specific power has increased as a result of superheat, efficiency has increased somewhat. Now, let us look at second law efficiency. Average temperature at which heat is added has increased now, okay, because understandably, because we have superheat also now. So, rate at which exergy is supplied is 2110.44 kilojoule. Okay. Notice that we have assumed this reservoir to be at a temperature of 560 degrees Celsius. So, as we indicated here 347.4 plus 212.6. So, that is 560 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, the reservoir is maintained at uh, 560 degrees Celsius and heat is supplied from that reservoir. So, rate at which exergy is recovered comes out to be like this and second law efficiency is 72.3%. Okay. So, you can see that uh, thermal efficiency has increased slightly, but second law efficiency was 81.43 that has now decreased to 72.3. So, that has decreased considerably. 
and let us see uh, why that is ok. So, rate of exergy destruction in the turbine and pump are 0 as we uh, discussed earlier and rate of exergy destruction in the condenser is also 0 because it is still operating in the uh, saturated mixture region. Now, rate of exergy destruction in the boiler has now come out to be 584.15 compared to 231. So, you can see that it has uh, doubled in the rate of exergy destruction in the boiler has doubled as a result of superheat ok. Because the temperature difference across which heat transfer takes place has become even higher now ok because the reservoir is being maintained at a higher temperature. So, how do we actually uh, uh, reduce the rate of exergy destruction in the uh, boiler ok. So, this is now more than uh, twice the value that we calculated earlier. So, uh, the exergy destruction here as I said is primarily because of the large temperature difference between the source and the working substance.